The fundamental tactics by which enemy air power is knocked out have been developed over long years of practice and tested finally in the heat of combat. This is no hit and miss procedure and may be compared in a sense with the perfectly timed activities of the sports world. A firing approach, like the performance of a well-coordinated athlete, looks easy. And it is easy when performed by a pilot who has been properly trained. The expert bowler gets strikes only after hours of intelligent practice. Likewise, the golfer, the acrobat, the diver. There is a direct parallel between the form of a champion golfer and the maneuvers of an expert fighter pilot. The golfer must practice continuously, intelligently, with every club in his bag. If he is weak in any one type of play, his chances of winning a tournament are greatly impaired. So it is with the fixed gunner. Like the champion golfer, we have to depend on our own proficiency to beat the enemy. The golfer has his bag of clubs from which to choose. We have our gunnery approaches are types of attack. This rough composite model shows an enemy bomber surrounded by the various gunnery approaches. From this it is evident that when you know how to make the fundamental gunnery approaches, you are able to attack him successfully from any angle. Your choice of approach in combat will depend on the type, speed, and fire opposition of the enemy aircraft. No matter what approach you use, there is a definite pattern to follow, which will bring results. These approaches have been proved in actual combat and will continue to be effective if they are carried out with skill and good judgment. There are four fundamental approaches. The side approach, left or right with altitude variations. The overhead approach, from the same or opposite directions to the target, the head-on from above or below, and the stern approach with its variable starting positions. The secret of success in all gunnery approaches is proper timing. Carefully time all your approaches to arrive at the desired firing angle and the effective range of 1,000 feet simultaneously. Continue through the firing ranges, break away underneath the target, and start your recovery for a second attack. Against multi-placed aircraft, you will have more opportunity to use the side approach than any other. The side approach may be made from three different levels. High side, flat side, low side. As seen from above, the flight paths of the high, flat, and low side are identical. The same S-turn is used whether you shoot from a high, flat, or low angle. This is an obvious tactical advantage because the enemy free gunner doesn't know which approach you intend to use. And in every case, the run is started from a position higher than that of the target. It is of utmost importance that you carefully gauge the radius of each turn, smoothly tightening or easing off in order to stay in the groove. By properly timing the run, our pilots have consistently made this attack without receiving a single bullet hole from enemy free gunfire. In executing the side approach, the pilot may maneuver so that he arrives at the firing position about 40 degrees above the level of the target, high side, within 10 degrees of the level of the target, flat side, or about 20 degrees below the level of the target, low side. The ideal position to commence a side approach is predicated to a certain extent on the speed of the target and the desired firing angle.
when firing on a quarter approach between 45 and 30 degrees, more shooting time is available than when firing on a beam approach between 80 and 65 degrees. Although more hits will be made between 45 and 30 degrees, your plane becomes an easier target for the enemy free gunner. At first, you should learn to hit at firing angles between 55 and 35 degrees, and then gradually work up to firing angles more nearly on the beam. In making a high side approach, it is best to gain a position about 3,000 feet ahead on a 45 degree bearing to the target's line of flight with an altitude advantage of about 1,200 feet. The approach follows a definite pattern or groove which you learn to feel in the air. Time this first turn carefully. That's where you make your money. Once you start an approach, keep your eye on the target. Reverse the turn, keep the lead up while sliding down the curve track to fire. Before any attack can be carried out successfully, there are certain important steps to take. Go over that checkoff list. Generator charging, mixture automatic rich, guns charged, master and selector gun switches on, tab set for firing speed, sight on, fly smoothly. Think of the aileron first when a change of direction is necessary. Keep the ball in the center. It must be there when you squeeze the trigger if you expect to hit. Take a good look around and sight all other planes in the firing group. Then keep your eye on the target and watch him like a hawk. To start the run, make a smooth, nose-high turn toward the target. Drop the nose as necessary to keep the enemy constantly in sight. As you come to a point almost a beam of the target, start to bank in the opposite direction to reverse your turn. Increase the throttle, bring the line of sight up, and keep it up ahead of the target. When the effective range is reached, squeeze the trigger and fire as long as you can hold that lead. Then cease firing, break away downward, and then parallel the course of the target. As you pass under the target, begin a steady 20 degree climb either to the right or left. Use your excess speed in regaining position and altitude for another run. In all side approaches, it becomes increasingly difficult to hold the proper lead as the range decreases. This is because of more G's due to the quick change of direction. When you can no longer hold your lead, concentrate on breaking away to gain position for another run. The mechanical principle of the side approach is simple. It is merely a matter of timing the S turn to arrive at the point in the flight path where the target, in effect, hooks that path and pulls you through. You continue firing down this theoretical road and break away before being pulled behind the target. If you have too little lead in the beginning, you will hook on a stern of the target and find that you never can regain enough lead. The flat side approach is almost exactly the same as the high side, except that it may be started from a slightly lower level. A favorable altitude advantage in this case would be between six and 900 feet. Go over the checkoff list and start the first run. Now drop the nose to the approximate level of the target and stay in the groove. As you come out of the second turn, increase throttle and continue on into the firing point. As before, you pass under and then parallel the target. You don't gain as much speed in this run as on the high side. Consequently, it takes longer to get up to the second attack position.
the low side approach also starts from a point above the level of the target. In this case, you should be from four to 600 feet above and 3,000 feet ahead of the target. When you have reached the starting position and have completed the firing checkoff list, make the first turn toward the target, let the nose drop below the level of the target, but not behind it, and keep the nose down until the reverse turn is begun. At this point, you should be below the target and ahead of his beam. Give it full throttle and bring the line of sight well ahead of the target's path and climb to a favorable firing position. At the completion of firing, the pilot finds himself almost on his back. Break away sharply by pulling back on the stick and then rolling out to parallel the target's flight path. It takes longer to regain position for a second attack after making this run because of the loss of speed and the uphill climb during the approach. Let's analyze the mistakes in this low side approach. The pilot fails to gauge his turns correctly and he falls behind. He has to make a long, slow, uphill approach and he never gets within close firing range. He could help the situation somewhat by the use of full throttle in his final climb. A loss of speed in the final climb creates a tendency to drift too far astern and be pulled flat. Allowing yourself to be pulled flat is a common error in any side approach. It can also be caused by failure to reverse the turn soon enough. Careful and skillful timing is necessary to execute a correct turn. You are also in error if you start too far out to the side. Obviously, you will not be able to reach effective range if you start the run too far back. This pilot drops his nose a little too much in the first turn, but he gauges his turns correctly and by using plenty of throttle is able to reach closer firing range. If the turns are made too tight, it results in long range fire or a tail chase to catch up. Don't get caught treading air or using excess air space when gaining a position for a second attack. Decide where you want to go and get there quickly. Any lost motion will cause you to lose valuable advantage. If you have an enemy to attack and can get to a position for an overhead run, by all means do it. You can make this attack if you're on the same course as the target or on the opposite course. But in either case, a greater altitude advantage is needed than for any other approach. This altitude advantage will vary according to the speed of the target and the type of plane you're flying. The faster your plane, the more altitude you will require. In this approach, the enemy is usually surprised. This approach requires considerable practice to perfect, but it can be mastered by any pilot who analyzes the maneuver intelligently. Also, the speed gain can be used for recovering to almost any desired position for a second attack. In addition to that, the opposing gunners have an almost impossible shot. They are forced to aim straight up. In the modern service fighter, you should start this approach from a position at least 2,000 feet above, 
3,000 feet or more ahead and just enough to one side of the target so that you can look back and down at him comfortably. After gaining this position, follow the groove from the moment you swing into the run. As in all other approaches, carefully control the radius of this turn. so that you will be directly above the target flight path as you enter the dive. After completing the checkoff list, start a smooth, nose-high turn toward the target path with the idea of completing a 180-degree turn and rolling over to inverted flight at a point ahead of and in the same vertical plane that contains the target. Then drop the nose on down and sweep up slightly ahead of the target. You should reach effective range while still in a dive of not less than 60 degrees, which will be flattened out rapidly as you follow the target. However, you should pass him at an angle of not less than 45 degrees if your timing is right. You can enter the dive from an opposite course by doing a half roll at the right instant and dropping the nose on the target so that the firing angle and range are arrived at as before. This type of approach is more difficult to time correctly because at a point before the half roll, you're likely to be blind on the target. However, it is possible to drop your wing in order to keep the target in view and at the proper moment, continue on over and down on him. The most common error in the overhead attack is swinging too wide and passing on through the vertical plane of the target. Once you're in the vertical plane, it is so easy to hit. Let's watch an overhead attack from the cockpit of the fighter. We are now making the first turn. With the nose pointed high above the horizon, we move to the vertical plane and roll over. Another error is in starting so low that you haven't enough air space to complete the maneuver and you dive without ever getting your sight ahead of the target. Obviously, you shouldn't employ this type of attack when the target is too low to enable you to pull out of your dive safely. This gentleman is a boner a pilot never pulls more than once. The head-on approach is seldom selected by the fixed gunner because the range changes so rapidly. The firing time is short, and after the breakaway, the target is gone. The relative speed is so great that it is impossible to regain quickly a position for a second attack. Despite the disadvantages of the head-on approach, the situation may arise when enemy bombers or torpedo planes are so close to the dropping angle when you meet them that there is no time for any other type of approach. On two-place dive bombers or torpedo planes, you're equally safe in making the run from above or below. The pullout is above the target if the run is started from above. Experienced pilots prefer to make this run from slightly below, recovering below, because they're better able to close to a short range without danger of collision. It is obvious in this type of run, you can open fire at a longer range due to the rapid rate of approach and the added relative bullet velocity. Think of the enemy plane as the familiar target sleeve. 
the run should be started out far enough to get lined up with the enemy's flight path. If you find yourself off to one side, use plenty of aileron to get lined up as quickly as possible. Here you see this maneuver from the pilot's viewpoint. Watch how he brings himself into line by quickly banking and turning soon enough in order to meet the target sleeve head on. If you haven't time to get into this correct position, by banking and approaching a few degrees off the target's flight path, you can still make an effective approach. The approach from the stern is the simplest of all fixed gunnery runs. Normally, this approach should only be used against enemy fighters. But under certain circumstances, it may be applied against any type of aircraft. The tail approach may start from almost any position abaft the beam of the target. In case the enemy has no tail stinger, you can make your approach from slightly below. Always recover below, breaking away in a radical dive if attacking a formation in order to avoid fire from nearby planes. Due to the relative position, it is usually impossible to quickly regain a favorable spot for a second run. You can readily see that when used against planes with tail turrets and against rear guns, it should be employed with the greatest of caution. Besides a thorough knowledge of the basic approaches, it is important to realize the exceptions. There are times when it will be necessary to barrel on in an attack without gaining a favorable position. For example, when you are flying escort on friendly planes, it is your responsibility to protect them and you must be prepared to do it under any circumstances. You may have an opportunity to use only a part of one of these runs. For instance, if you meet the enemy on an opposite course and you have enough altitude, simply roll over on your back for an overhead. Or if you're out to one side and far enough ahead, the last part of a side approach can be used. As a matter of fact, there is no conceivable position for the initiation of an attack where the fundamentals of these gunnery approaches cannot be used. If in practice you're not hitting, analyze your approach from start to finish. Perhaps your starting point is in error. Try it at a slightly different altitude or vary your bearing on the target. Don't be discouraged. It is difficult even for an experienced pilot to measure off distance through open space. Check your turns, your shooting ranges, and angles. If these are apparently OK, your point of aim must be incorrect. Talk over your runs with an instructor or a pilot who is hitting. Possibly they can show you where you're in error. Now, let us imagine you are able to gain a position in combat to make any type of run you choose. First, ask yourself these questions. What is the type and speed of the target? What is your own plane's performance as compared to theirs? How many friendly and enemy planes are involved? Will you be able to surprise your Japs or Nazis by attacking from the clouds or out of the sun? When you have placed yourself in a position to make the run you have chosen, Remember to go over the checkoff list. Never lose sight of the target. Fly your plane smoothly through the turns and toward the target. Time these turns to arrive at the firing angle and the effective range at the same instant. Break away sharply and recover to a position for a second attack. From the foregoing, it's not hard to see that when so many factors are involved, and since any one of them could alter the choice of attack, you must exert every effort to become deadly in all approaches. The side approach, the overhead, the head-on, and the stern approach. In these gunnery approaches, you will find the reason why all Navy fighter pilots regard the unescorted 
although heavily gunned bomber, as cold meat. You have learned that the side approach cannot be executed correctly unless it is started out ahead of the target and to one side. However, if you are about 45 degrees on the bow of the target, the distance away can be varied. As a matter of fact, in combat, it is sometimes desirable to start a considerable distance away, to come in at high speed through enemy fighter protection to get to the bombers. Notice how far away the fighter is from this target plane. In this side approach, the pilot will shoot from an angle on the quarter, about 40 to 50 degrees. Note the fairly long shooting time. Here is an approach more nearly on the beam where the shooting time is relatively short. But obviously, the opposing free gunner will have little time to draw a bead on the fighter. Now, on a target sleeve, follow this same approach from the pilot's viewpoint. Notice the extreme angle of attack and how quickly the range decreases. You can see that in this beam attack, you've got to be on when you open fire. The starting positions designated for practice show you the ideal spot to commence an approach. This pilot has enough altitude to make an overhead approach but is too far out to the side. He recognizes this fact, however, and governs his first turn accordingly. He makes a wide, sweeping turn, carefully watching the enemy to hit the groove in the vertical plane of the target and rolling over to inverted flight, he sweeps his sight up ahead to fire before being pulled flat. In this overhead approach, the fighter is nearer to the correct position. He is rolling over immediately without wasting any time. This attack develops rapidly, and the opposing free gunner has little time to get set before it is all over, and the fighter is moving away with a terrific speed advantage. The overhead approach has a particular advantage in that once in position, the fighter can attack no matter what move the enemy may make. The fighter, by using his ailerons, pivots on his nose, matching any evasive turn and drops on the enemy before he can get away. Recovery can be made with equal facility to the right or left. In making the head-on approach, you must get directly ahead and close to the same level of the enemy, bringing your line of sight to match his line of flight. It isn't always easy to accomplish, but when you are lined up correctly, you will have almost a no deflection shot. Use the aileron sharply in getting to this position in time to settle down before you have to open fire. Remember, you've got to get far enough ahead to make this run. By keeping the target in view, Smooth turns and proper timing will bring you exactly into the correct position.
In the stern approach, it is important to break away below and turn to avoid enemy front gunfire. The intelligent combat pilot knows his responsibilities and he strives for perfection in fundamentals in order to achieve a cool, smooth, machine-like precision in action. He corrects all his mistakes in practice. For in actual combat, the smallest individual error may mean the loss of a battle. Fundamental gunnery approaches are the very heart of formation fighting. Perfect teamwork of planes in battle is the result of each individual performing his duty with the skill and confidence came through constant rehearsal. Gunnery approaches are the punches of the combat plane. Knowing how to direct these punches quicker, harder, and smarter than your opponent is the only sure way to knock him out. <laughs>